Hey guys, my name is Christoph and today I'd like to show you how a blast furnace works. Now, what is a blast furnace? What do we need it for? It is a part of the steel production process and it produces a raw material that the steel is made out of, namely pig iron. So, in the blast furnace we produce pig iron. The pig iron, which is basically raw iron, comes into the steel mill and from it steel is produced. I'll do another video on how exactly that works, but let look, let's look at our raw material. This is a fairly crudely drawn um, picture of a blast furnace, but it will serve the purpose of letting you understand how it all works. Now, um, what do you all see here? We have a blast furnace, a top part where it is filled with the raw materials. And then I'll explain what, what comes in into it. And this solid stage moves closer into this hot part here where everything is basically melted up, where the process happens. Um, later at the bottom it is tapped and it can, all comes out and it can be further processed. I said we have a solid stage, we also have a gas stage which rises up and is then sucked out of the oven here. But let's take it also. Okay, we have very often a conveyor belt. Other blast furnaces, older ones mainly, um, use skip hoist elevators to bring the materials up but um, most modern ones have a conveyor belt as far as I know. So all the raw materials come up here. What uh, goes up there, what gets into the oven, is for one coke. Coke is a product of coal, a distilled product, with a lot of the impurities removed, and I'll tell you later on what we need it for. So all the coal, all the coke, um, comes up this conveyor belt, gets in here and is evenly spread out by this uh, rotating contraption here. With it um, also all the ores come up and ores as you know are minerals, are basically rocks that contain iron. So that's where we get the actual iron from, the ores. There are different ores, um, one of the most common ones and easily converted ones is Hematite, it is a reddish ore, so I'll use red uh, for it. It also gets up the conveyor belt once the coke is through, gets in here and is also evenly spread out. And then we have one layer of the ores and one layer of coke in between. Now, it slowly moves to this hot part here. Now, why does it get hot? Where do we get the energy for the process? As you may know, coke used to be used as fuel. So people used it to heat their homes, at least in Europe it was that way. Now, for the heat, it's not the coke that is actually responsible, but this hot wind ring. So there is a ginormous tube, a ginormous ring around the blast furnace that provides the energy. It blows 1200 degree hot air, just air, nothing fancy, air into the oven and heats the entire process up to the 2200 deg degrees that we actually need. Now I'm a Euro boy so when I say degree I mean degree Celsius, you'll have to deal with SI units. 2200 degrees Celsius is a temperature that allows the ores to melt up. And then later on we separate the liquid parts. We can separate iron from what is basically left over off the rocks, what is still mineral impurities, which we call slag. Now before all that happens, we still have a problem. And I still haven't told you what coke actually does in there. The coke is our reduction agent. Reduction as in the chemically opposite reaction to oxidization. 
Now, what is oxidized in there? Iron, in its natural occurring form, is not pure. It has, in a natural world, bonded with another element. Obviously, it, it's not a, a noble gas or anything, so it still wants to bond. And in the natural, naturally occurring, it likes to bond with the air. That is why iron, if you leave it out for too long, it will start to rust, because the iron wants to form a bond with air. And that has happened, obviously, uh, in the ore. It is an oxide. The iron in the ore is an iron oxide, but we need chemically pure iron, and therefore we reduce it. We get the oxygen molecule that is bonded to the iron out of it to have chemically pure iron. How does that happen? As I said, the coke is the reduction agent. So at a certain stage, starting around, well, there are different parts, there are different reactions that happen uh, to reduce it. Basically, whenever an oxygen atom is set free in the process from the iron oxide, it bonds to a carbon from the coke. That is why the coke is in there. It is our uh, the carbon in the coke is our reduction agent. So it bonds to a carbon. It then rises up as the carbon monoxide gas that it just formed. So carbon and oxide. It's always little bits rising up off the carbon monoxide gas, and it is being sucked out these vents. And most plants um, will use it later on to some degree um, for producing energy, for producing heat, or some even may have a caloric power plant, which means they convert the gas into electricity. Um, or at the very least, they can convert it into heat for a lot of the other steel production processes. So now, we are in the hot part. We have the chemically pure iron. At this point, everything is molten up. It's just liquid. And if enough liquid material has accumulated down here, we can tap the blast furnace. That's what it's called, tapping. Now, you can imagine that there are predefined uh, tapping positions, predefined holes, that are closed off with uh, clay that hardens out and closes the oven off. But a giant industrial drill comes here, it's basically a suspended machine, and it just swivels over um, this hole and drills through so that all the hot materials, all the hot materials can come out. So once it's tapped, the entire liquid stage comes out into this spout. We still have the problem that the chemically pure iron is still mixed up with what's over from, from the rocks, with the slag. And at this point, the entire rock, as I said, is liquid. Now we have the liquid iron and all the mineral residues from that rock, from the ore, that are still in there, and we need to separate them. And now that's actually not very fancy, it's a very uh, simple mechanical process. There's a little wall in that spout and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the spout. So the iron, the chemically pure iron, which is a lot denser, a lot heavier than the slag, than the impurities from the rock, it can pass through here. So it can go beneath that wall that is there and everything that's left of the ore, all the mineral, uh, all the mineral, mineral parts are less dense. They float atop of the entire mixture, much like oil will float on top of water. And when it comes to that wall, it can't go underneath because it floats atop. So it accumulates here and eventually goes up and along that side of the spout. And now we have successfully separated the two that came out here together, the iron and what's left of the minerals, you can imagine it, much like lava. Basically it's nothing else, it's lava, it's molten rocks, and we separate them here at this point. Then the iron moves on to the, ste the actual steel works and is transformed into steel, and the slag 
um, has very often has other uses, for example, in construction. All right, that's it. I hope you understood all of it and hopefully see you in a future video. Thanks.